You're listening to RTI Audio, powered by Rocky Top Insider. This is Pancakes and Bacon with VFL, Tyler Kerbison, and Reed Bacon. Hello, Vol Nation. Welcome to another episode of Pancakes and Bacon. I'm your host, as always, Kyler Kerbison, joined with Reed Bacon. Finally have my voice back, so feeling really good about that. Um, wonderful weekend this past weekend because there was no stress about the Vols playing. Um, but we got to watch some games that maybe gave us a little bit of light into what the Vols have coming up. So we're going to talk about that um, and break down some keys to victory. Uh, but first, before we get into any of that, Reed, how are we doing, bud? Hey, big boy. Hey. <laughs> I've uh, I've been doing better. I'm uh... yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, tell go ahead, tell your truth there, Reed. I uh, <clears throat> sneezed this morning and it blew my back out. <laughs> Now tell the real reason you blew your back out. Yeah, man. Why not? Oh, now is this the final sign that you are an old man? Well, it really. So I know that that was a good joke there, but I really did, <clears throat> and I think it's because I had a great weekend. Uh, Megan and I went to Highland, North Carolina, which if any of our listeners have been there, it's uh, you know how awesome it is. Cute little town. Great little mountain town. I'd heard great things, but she wanted to go. So, you know, when they want to go, we go. Exactly. And, and uh, it was great. We could not have had any better weather. The weather was fantastic. And But, but you know, when you have back pain, I never stop doing my back therapy as a warm-up every day when I'm working out. And I've really tried to get even better about doing core work. But when it feels good, like, it feels good. And so there was probably a three year span that wherever I drove, I always had a towel in the back of or in the my seat. And I haven't needed it as of late as of recently, but I have noticed the last time my back uh, got hurt when I was uh, at Orange Theory, it had come after a long drive to Memphis and back. And so now I'm like, well, today I'm literally getting out of the shower, standing there, drying my hair, drying off. Maybe I put it in a couple bad spots, and then I literally sneezed, and I just went, you, and I felt it. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And I didn't think it was that bad at first, but then after I go and sit down uh, okay. for a couple for a couple meetings on, on Zoom for work, and then you stand up, and you're like, whoa, like, this is bad. Yeah. So, I, so, yes, it was, but when I sneezed was the trigger point, but I think it was because I had been in the car for a total of five hours over the weekend and didn't have any support, so... Well, at least you had a good weekend, right? Yeah, right. It could have happened before that. And then I would have been, you know, walking like a Gramps around. La uh, last year, I did the same thing to my back um, right before the Florida game. And uh, uh, I think it was literally like bending over to pick up something. Like that's when it happened. It wasn't working out. It wasn't lifting. It was just like bending over. Yeah. Um, and it's just random. It just hits you. That's what's frustrating. You what, like I was, I was so worried about that Florida game because we, I came in for that and we walked around all day. My back was was feeling it. I'll tell you what, sitting on the the, the bleacher seats wasn't great for it. You ended up standing half the game. Well, you and Jack and I all did ended up standing half the game, which True. was which was probably great. Uh, when I walk and when I stand, it usually helps it. So. Yeah. When I change, when I go back and forth, it, I learned that from previous back injuries. It's like, all right, if you're going to sit down and let it rest, let your muscles rest for a while, but don't stay there. Don't stay stagnant. Stand back up, move around, stretch a little bit, and then you can go back down. But it was yeah. like you had to do both. If you did one for too long, it's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I mean – that's the thing. You just never know. You know, even I'm doing as much preventative as stuff. You just never know what's going to happen. But anyways, it was a very nice weekend. And as much as we love football, I mean, I, I still watched as much as I could this weekend. But it's nice to get away from it for a little bit and kind of have the score checking. And like you said, not being anxious. Uh, it's a stress-free Saturday. Right, right. And, yeah, I mean, it's like we get really excited when we win, but we have to go through a whole – 
And I didn't tell, well, I mean, if it's a South Carolina kickoff, you're nervous all day. And then, you know, thank goodness once the game started, I felt better. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm excited about a and I, I did come to the realization I'm not allowed to say I really want this one anymore unless it's at the beginning of the season. And I say, I want this one more than this one, because every week I'm like, I really, really want this one. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want every victory. <laughs> exactly. So it's just like a really lame thing to say that I really, really want this one. Only, re- only time I'm going to say that is at the beginning of the year. And I'm going to be like, hey, I'd rather have this one than this one. But I can't stand Jimbo. I, that's really the only thing I don't like about Texas A&M is I just can't stand him. And so yeah. I would, I just don't want to lose to them. Uh-huh. I don't want to I don't lose like the home. fact that Walter Nolan picked them over us. I've kind of Maybe forgot that's about one more thing, but yeah, I kind of forgot about him, but yeah, it'd be nice to beat him. And, uh, but uh, let's hear what you have to say. And by the way, I don't know if you know this, uh, I did check the spread. It's a three and a half point spread Tennessee's favored, which that, means yeah. it's, ba- it's basically a pick them slash, sliding about a half point to us because they usually give you three points for the yeah, for the home yeah, team. So exactly. So I mean that's uh, that's kind of eye opening in and of itself. Like Tennessee is ranked number nineteen, Texas A&M is unranked, and they think this is a pick 'em. Well, if it was neutral side. Yes, if it was neutral side, they would be like, it's up in the air. Have no idea. Um and I guess that kind of shows some of the strengths that Texas A&M has, even though they have two losses. Um, and it's, and it's, you know, the, the lift of Bama, right? Like no matter if Bama is down, if they're not as good as they usually are, they're still like, well, it's Bama. It's like, well, you didn't lose that bad to Bama. So like, we still consider you a pretty good team. Um, so I think that, I think that's part of it, but let's get into the Texas A&M and Bama game. Uh, what a wonderful opportunity for Tennessee. Like, let me tell you something. When you're prepping for these teams, what a great chance to watch the film on both of them over the bye week. Because Bama's not holding anything back. Texas A&M is not holding anything back. This is who they are. This is their defense. This is their offense. And it's like our team's going to be watching the same film for three weeks in a row. But by the time you get to Bama, if you don't me- if you don't have every guy's number memorized and know exactly who everyone is, you're not you're not watching film correctly. So I'm very excited that this game actually happened beforehand. This game was a huge part of the reason I thought we'd beat Texas A&M uh, because they had to play Bama before us. And watching this game gave me more confidence that we can beat Texas A&M. Let's dive into that. What did you see that made you feel confident? What I, what made me feel good about it was the sacks that were given up. So Alabama had five sacks versus Texas A&M. Before that game, Texas A&M had only had seven, which is about as many as we've given up. Um, But... Alabama was able to get after their tackles, was able to confuse some of the pass protection, was able to get past running backs and tight ends who maybe wanted to try and stay in and block. Um, And with our defensive line, we are still tied for second in the country behind Texas A&M in sacks because Texas A&M just got six versus Bama, which is on the other side that I will talk about. But – Getting a rush in on Max Johnson, um, it made me open my eyes to, whoa, what a great – like, what's the best thing that we have on defense is our rush. So, we get after Max Johnson. Texas A&M doesn't really run the ball very well. um, And it just kind of leaves the door open for our defense to be able to play well. On the other side, Texas A&M – and what this our offense is going to have to do is play fast. I know we we say it every week, but with the way Texas A&M rotates and switches up their defensive line to a three front, to a three four, to a four three, they 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 move those guys around in different gaps, different different alignments. If you go fast, they don't have a chance to do that. They don't have a chance to 
tell them what defense to be in. They don't have a chance to bring in that that guy that they want on the rush. They don't have a chance to set up the blitz that they want with the linebacker in the corner coming off or anything like that. So playing fast and playing ahead of the sticks is going to be huge too. The two things on third down is either they send six dudes in man coverage or they send three and they drop eight. And then it's like quarterback, try and beat us, which they might do versus us more. Yeah. Because of who Joe is. <clears throat> I and I was about to ask you, I don't I don't know which one you would rather have. I oh man, I get kind of nervous them dropping three. And uh because if they blitz, Joe showed a little bit. Uh well e- even if they don't blitz, but if they um yeah. if they get to him, whether it's blitzing or not, whether it's just bringing four. I, he showed me in the South Carolina game that he was able to get out of the pocket, get downfield, get to keep his eyes downfield, throw some passes. So that made mm-hmm. me that makes me feel pretty good. But if you drop three, our guys can only hold on for so long. So there's a point in time where it's like makes me nervous that he might force something. Yeah. Maybe maybe they get a sack because it's more of a covered sack. It's he's going to have to be very disciplined of hitting something early. Or really late because if you got eight guys in coverage, it's either you got to get it before they all get to their zones, yep. or you have to get to it because you broke out. They're chasing, and Ramel's gone from this way to putting his foot in the ground and sees his quarterback going this way. So it's like either really early or really late, and that makes me all sorts of tingly inside, and not in a good way. So no, I think I think what's going to be key too is in those third and long situations it's a third and nine it's a third and ten what does joe like what's the game plan of fourth down right is hypo going to come in and be like listen we're going to go for it on fourth so if it's rush three drop eight and you don't see anybody open go get six yards go get seven yards running we're going to go for it on fourth i think that's so, a great i think it's a great point great because point. i think it's the only way to really fight that rush three drop eight. I remember having to play teams like an Oklahoma who would do that on third down. Um, and it would just be ages and ages of blocking for an offensive line to try and somebody get open. Um, and, you know, when we were with Worley, it was kind of like, he, he's not going to be able to like outrun everybody. So you're just kind of sitting there with your arms crossed. Like I, like, what are we supposed to? They have everyone covered that, you know, they're just sitting back there. Um, it's almost like quarterback has to run. They, and they probably didn't do that a lot with Jalen Milrow because that's his strength. He's a really good runner. So well, they try to get in his face. Well, I think I'll be surprised. I don't think it'll be much in between. I think you'll see six coming. And or you'll see three. I don't think it'll be really a lot of four, maybe maybe some fives. But I, yeah. I think they're going to do feast or famine because they're like, we're going to either speed him up and, and bring it, which hopefully if they try to speed him up, he has and knows where his man beaters are. But not even the point that you made of Heupel's like talking to him throughout the week, like Joe, just know that we're going for it on fourth. He's probably going to even make his play calls based on that if that's his game plan. Yeah. So Joe, Joe will have it in the back of his head, but it's also, you know, I don't know how long they get to talk in the headset. In in the, do they get to do that in college like they do in the pros? Because the pros get it until fifteen seconds. I don't know if they like installed that in college. Like now they have that stuff in the headsets. They might. Since I yeah. played, I, I, I haven't heard anything about it, but okay. But jo- but Dobbs didn't have it, or Worley didn't have it. No. Okay. So so then it is also maybe a part of the play calling too that we're talking like, hey, if it's third and eight, I might be sending you a draw here. I might, you know, or quarterback draw, or there's this little shovel pass, right, right, or or even, hey, I'm going to run a three man route, but if you can get get up field here because we're about to go for it on on fourth. Yeah. But I. If, if we play like we play against South Carolina defensively, we'll be in good shape. If they play like they play against South Carolina defensively and offensively, I'll be a little nervous because if we give A&M uh, two, two, two turnovers, 
I think just athlete wise, offensive line wise, it's mm-hmm. going to be hard to, 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 to come back from that. I think A and M, like we've talked about, they'll 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 drop eight and bring three, or they're going to bring six and man up. And if they man up, that I thought South Carolina had pretty good DBs, but I would be surprised if if, if Oklahoma's, I mean, if A and M's aren't better, even though there were a few busted coverages, which ties into what you mentioned about going fast. Yeah, and so staying fast, staying ahead of the chains, the run game is going to be very very important, even if our guys give up a few on the pass protection. If we can still be really good and consistent running the ball, I think that's going to go a long way for this game. Yeah, I would I, agree. I, this, this is going to – it's a 3.30 game, so atmosphere will be good and it will be raucous. Will it be as good as South Carolina in a night game? I don't know. I mean, you never doubt Tennessee fans. I'm, well, I'm not I mean, a little checker kneeling can fire right. some people up. So Right, right. So – I think Nealon is extremely important in this game, just like it's going to be again against uh, against Georgia. But offensively, start fast, throw it away before you throw it to them. True. And and that defense is going to have to stand on its head again. It is what is what I think. I I just think I'll be pretty surprised if we if we route them or even feel as comfortable as I did against South Carolina because I just think A and M's a better team. Yeah, I. I... I feel that A and M is a better team. I I think I feel that they're a better team because of the dudes they have. Like, right, right. I consider Max Johnson to be better and more consistent than Spencer Rattler. Like I consider their defensive line to be a lot better athletes than South Carolina's. Um, well, and, and, and I also, mean, and, and you more, know, Jimbo I, recruited Max, really well. Yeah, no, their recruiting has been great. And Max John, if Max Johnson and Spencer Rattler both play. To, the, to their potential, Spencer Rattler's better. But we don't know how often that's going to happen. I just want to make that yeah. clear that you're yes. not saying. Yes, yeah. yes. If Spencer can play to his top, then he is better. But Max seems more uh, more consistent. Hey, um, Max is a competitor too, dude. There was a couple of those plays late. He got game. rocked. Bro, he got smacked. And there was a couple of them that I thought he was dead, dead to rights. And he gets just enough – Gets that little lefty and completes like a third and six. That guy catches it. He spins DB around or the linebacker around, holding on. And they, I mean, he, he's a gritty and, little player. And and that's another thing with Max Johnson is you love the heart out of the guy and and the way he kind of fights through that stuff. But he's also throwing balls while he's getting tackled. Like that can be very dangerous. He actually oh. threw an interception. Because he had a guy in his face and he's throwing it as the guy's tackling him, and it's a little bit behind his brother, the tight end, and he gets picked off. So it's like, okay, here's somebody who's going to do whatever he can to win the game. This is yeah. a big game for them. They're away. He's going to try and make a play, and maybe something happens. Maybe he does try and force it. Maybe he is trying to go across the middle, and someone's able to do something with that. Um, you know, and I, I think, uh, I think the, uh, number zero Smith is a freak athlete and just needs to be like, where is he at? Right. Where is he at? Because when he's in the game, it's, is there a screen? Is there a crossing pattern? Is there something like, where are they trying to get him in open space? Cause that's all I'd be doing as a coach. Now I saw I, I watched uh, mainly the fourth quarter. I rewatched a, a quick highlight of it. It seemed like to me they went a lot of boundaries. You know, they whether it was a quick play action and dump it left or right, whether it was complete or incomplete, they tried to get on the edges. So I feel like defensively, Tennessee, besides having to have a really good rush, is going to have to be good on the edges again with tackling, breaking mm-hmm. on balls. For me, they also they also liked slants coming across the middle on big downs, right? I need yeah. a first down. It's it's third and six. Third it's and funny. six, yeah. Like every time, and and their receivers are just like, I'm, I'm going to win my one-on-one and get inside this guy, and he's going to hit him every time. So it getting in like a zone when it's a third and medium, it's, it's – I don't know. I don't I, – my, my favorite would be a fake rush drop into the zone where it looks like I'm coming. I drop into the zone. Max Johnson doesn't see me drop. 
He throws it. I get a pick. Sure. They're going to have to be really good on their on their aim points and their rush lines as well because he he's not the athlete that some of the other quarterbacks are, but he's good enough and mobile enough to make a couple guys miss in the pocket and outside the pocket and continue out. So that's going to be another important thing. I will say this, too, about their defense. If Jermaine Burton, isn't that his first name, the woman beater? <laughs> yeah, for Alabama. Yeah, so I think he's a fine player. In no way do I think he's anywhere to the level of any of those other receivers they've had. And I don't know if anyone thinks that. I just got to get it out in the open. Yeah. So I think I, I, what I said, I, I think people agree with you more. Yeah. So I'm just getting it out there. You know, I don't want it to be misconstrued. I mean, he's, he's fine. I don't think he's anything special at all, but he looked better than I, I think A&M made him look better than he is. And that shows me that, I mean, Ramel, Squirrel, I hate to say it, this would have been a really, really big game for for a Brew McCoy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what's Dante? Is he back? Is he healthy? I mean, there's opportunities to to go and, and make yeah. plays deep. And down. I think a lot of I think a lot of Jermaine's plays were versus man coverage. Like he was right. he right. was working the corner that was assigned to him. Right. Um and I agree with you. Like when I think of that, I'm like, oh, Brew, right? I, I would love Brew just working this dude, working this buddy. Um, but it's also like, hey, Ramel, what do you got in your bag, man? Yeah. What kind we of see. routes you got? We need to see something. We need yeah. to see it. Because because if if we're calling a spade a spade, we all, everybody loves Ramel. Every Vault fan loves Ramel. The the plays he made for us last year, but we haven't seen a lot from him this year, right? right. It, does, it doesn't feel like he's made that huge impact that we kind of expected. Um, I think a lot of people kind of saw him as taking over the Jalen Hyatt role this year. So I, I, I really do think it's like Not a, necessarily in the way they play, but just stepping up in big-time moments. Exactly. It, it yeah. kind of felt like it felt like Brew had his role – as Mr. Consistent, you need me on third and 10. I can get you that. I'm not going to, you know, it's not going to be 60 yard bombs. It's going to be 15 yard digs. You got me some post corners. I, I'm good with that. And I can always rely on Brew, and he's going to be a hell of a blocker. And if I get any kind of screen, he's going to fight for the extra yards. Squirrel was here's our shot guy. Here's our sprint down the field, throw him the ball up. He's faster than everybody else. And Ramel is supposed to be like everything, right? He's our right. route runner. He's our post guy. He's our he's our seam. He's 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 the one going to make make dudes miss on the sideline and take it down, you know. And because that hasn't happened yet, it is kind of okay, here's the most opportunity you'll ever get. Our Mr. Consistent dropped. So who's going to step up in his place? I would lean towards Ramel, but I just don't know. Like I really don't know if it's going to be him. Um, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't know who it will be, but it, it we need somebody. We it has to be. It it has to be somebody, and it's. Um, I think I think we need some good balance. But in a game like this, it definitely helps your chances of winning when you got someone with four catches here, three catches here, six catches here. But then you can look on the stat and you see nine, 10 or 11 from someone else. Yeah. You, you know, it's just like when these bigger games, it, it like it helps. It's it's you you feel much better. Sorry. Hey, hey Georgia. Annie is going crazy in the background. She's Annie, hyped yeah. for the game this weekend. Come here, Annie. And you know, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a wide receiver that steps up. No, it up. doesn't. It could no. easily be Jacob or McChicken. Like yeah. either one of them could be the guy to step up. And maybe it is in our favor when they do rush the six and they play man coverage that it's a smaller guy on one of our bigger tight ends. Sure. Use your body, right? Box them out, get the catch, get down, get the first down. That's all we need out of you. I um, will be. 
I will be, before we get to our keys to victory, the last thing I'll say is I will be excited to see what Hypel has in the, in the, in the bag. You know, what, what has he seen after watching them this weekend, having time to prepare? Will we see it early? Will we see it within the first 15 plays? I don't know mm-hmm. if he's a big scripter. Are we going to yep. see it a big moment in the third or fourth quarter? But I'm excited, and I'm also excited to see see what Tim Banks does and how he feels like he needs to attack. Is it man up? Let's bring a lot of pressure. Um, are we – are we going to try to have some spies here and there? Max Johnson's not really a threat to run, but we don't want him getting out of the pocket and extending stuff. So I'll, I'll be excited to, to see how they play. For me, the keys to victory, because I do think this is a very, very balanced game. Yep. I personally feel like if both teams play their best, both teams play their best, then it is a flip of a coin. If they both play their best and we're at home, I think that helps a little bit. Maybe we can make one extra play here or there. If 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 they play pretty damn good and we don't bring it, I, I could get a little a little nervy that it's it they're gonna beat us and it might not look good in the process. Yeah. Uh I get I guess the one thing I'll be most surprised about is if we kind of route them and Maybe that's a good thing because sometimes when I feel good going into a game, it doesn't work out, and other times I'm a little bit nervous. We end up playing really well, so I, I don't know. But I just and this and this has nothing to do with them playing Alabama close because I don't think Alabama's very good. As a matter of fact, I think A and M kind of choked that game in, in a couple instances. I agree. So I don't want to say I don't want it to be like because of how they looked against Bama. I just think it's more about us. And yeah. hey, I, I've seen us play a good game against South Carolina but I still have that Florida loss in my mind. I just don't feel like we have as many opportunities. We don't have as many uh, opportunities to make mistakes like we did like last year. I'd be like, who cares? We could throw we could throw two picks and have a fumble, and I still think we could beat Wayne. I mean, a fumble return for a touchdown versus Bama. Who cares? We're who still, cares? We, we can still go score. It, it's a, That's a perfect example. It's like I never worried. Like we can literally go into a game and have three turnovers and we still win by 21. This year, I don't I don't see it, whether that's yeah, whether that's offensive line, whether that's quarterback, whether that's playmakers on the outside. Very much you, you need to keep this game in front of you offensively and defensively. Now, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, to your, um, you know, what are they going to have prepared based off of the, the couple weeks? that always leans into the script, right? What are those first 10, 15 plays that are scripted by Hypel? I think he's going to have something in the bag and like you're going to see the first drive or two. It's going to be like, boom, boom, boom. We're hitting them. We're hitting them. We're hitting them. It might slow down a little bit after that, but I, I think we can hold on. On offense, the biggest thing to me after watching Texas A&M is for the offensive line to identify the front to say this is three down linemen and four linebackers. This is four down linemen and two linebackers. This is five down linemen and one linebacker to identify exactly who everyone is. There's this hybrid rush guy that got number 10 that kind of drops some, plays a little linebacker, but also rushes. He's the guy they want to rush more than not. Um, but it it has to be crisp. It has to be, we are getting these four guys, the four most dangerous and best rushers, the offensive line needs to get every single time, and then we have a fifth. Everyone else is the back, the tight end, or it's hot, and it's on the quarterback. But that needs to be set in stone before you snap that ball. I don't care if you really want to go fast. If it is a third and long situation and you're getting that kind of look, it needs to kind of be agreed upon between Cooper and Joe. Like Cooper's like, I'm listen, I'm slowing this shit down. Like, let me identify this first and get everybody set so we can actually be on the same page. Because there's a lot of times where Bama's not on the same page. They 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 don't know exactly who's rushing. They get they get picked on games and, and coming over the top. And some of that ties into, you know, I'm a tackle and I have three guys sitting in front of me, and the inside guy rushes into my inside shoulder, and then the middle guy 
loops back around. But I should know that I have a running back picking up the outside guy and I need to go back in, right? If you're at tackle and you're not sure if you're supposed to get that outside guy or the middle guy or the inside guy, then you get confused. You kind of just stay in no man's land and someone's unblocked. They're free. So it has to be dynamite, plain and simple. This is who you're getting. If number one's coming off the edge in a corner blitz, that's the running backs. Don't even look at them. Do not get distracted. So that part on offense and then on defense, I don't care if it's if it's punts or if it's turnovers or if it's turnover on downs, but I need a short field a couple times. I need you to give me two short fields because I think we are going to need that versus this defense and this team. I think this defense can be really good. And when they play man coverage and they're on our wide receivers, it's hard to complete balls sometimes, right? If they don't get separation, if they're sending that blitz and getting sacks, it's hard to stay above the chains. So I'm going to need two times where a defense gives us a short field. If that's stopping them near the goal line, having them punt, and we get the ball in the 45, that's short field to me. I love it. If it's a pick, while they're trying to come out of their own, you know, 20, 25 yard line. I love it. So I just need a couple short fields from the defense. Defense play exactly how you usually do. Rush that quarterback like crazy. You know, play play in front of you. Make tackles in front of you. I know that you can do it. I just saw you do it versus South Carolina. But give me two. If they can give me two, I feel so much better about this game. I love it. I love that. I, I couldn't love it anymore. And they get two losses. Their their backs are going to be against the wall. I think yep. Jimbo could definitely pull some something out. But I I truly believe that uh, we have the coaching advantage, and I, and I hope I hope that that comes out and 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 shows its shows its, its true colors because if that's the case i think then we're gonna have a really good shot to win you yeah. know and I, just be- I like the uh i like the coaching advantage on special teams as well i love coach eckler and i know texas a&m is like check out Adon- you know the smith guy's returner blah, blah 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 like he does so great like i really I, like i'm so excited to see him jumping up and down when we lay that buddy out as he's trying to return the ball like talk about momentum, talk about some some juice going, right? We just, oh yeah, dang it, we got a punt. We punt it down and return, you know, punt team comes down and just lays buddy out. Like everybody's up again. Whole stadium's up again. All right, now it's time to get live for defense. It's the little things in big games. It's yeah, it really is. And that's why I love checker kneeling. That's why I love any kind of uniform thing. Like if there's one small motivation for any of these guys, take it, take it as much as you can give them, take it, like give them everything that makes them feel amazing right before they go out there. That's what I would rather have. Good pod brother. Hopefully uh, we will be coming back this weekend and uh, talking about a big victory. Oh yeah. Talking about Bama. (laughs) Get me fired up. Easy. Easy. All right. Hey, brother. brother. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening. If you are watching, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Uh, We love the comments. If you're just uh, listening, rate and review, download and re-download, and follow us on all those listening platforms. Uh, Also, follow us on social media, at Pancakes and Bacon for our main account on Twitter, at Pancakes and Bacon underscore RTI on Instagram. If you want to follow Reed, it is at RBacon26 on Twitter. And then for myself, it is just at Kyler Kerbison on all social media. So you can follow me there. Uh, thank you again. You guys are the best. Uh, you're the reason this show keeps going on. And uh, let's take it to the Aggies. As always, go Vols. <laughs>